Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our third example of how to find the point of intersection when we have two polar equations. In this case, we're combining the equation of a circle with the equation of a cardioid. Again, the best way to do this is to, is to use multiple ways to find those points of intersection. One of them is by using the method of graphing. So here we have the x and the y axis, and notice that we have the circle, the cardioid, and there's indeed three places where they intersect. Secondly, we're going to set the two equations equal to each other to see which of those three points of intersection we can find using the trigonometric approach. When we do that, we get the following. We set three times the cosine of theta equal to one plus the cosine of theta. So when we move this to the other side, now we have uh, the three times the cosine of theta minus one. When we bring the other side, that gives us two times the cosine of theta equals one, or the cosine of theta equals one half, which means that the angle is equal to the inverse cosine of one half. And with the cosine function, that happens at two different locations. We have this when theta is equal to 60 degrees or when theta is equal to 300 degrees. In either case, we get the value for the cosine to be equal to 1 half. Of course, at 60 degrees, that's pi divided by 3, and at 300 degrees, that's 5 pi divided by 3. All right, now when we set up a table of values, again, we end up finding those same two points. Those are these points right here. The one at 60 degrees, so this here would be an angle of 60 degrees. And if we go all the way around this way, that would be an angle of 300 degrees. Oop, I'm missing a zero. 300 degrees, like that. And notice we found these two points using this methodology, but we didn't find the point at the origin. And the reason for that is, if we take a look here, notice that the value of 1.5 is reached for the function when we have an angle of 60 degrees and the value of 1.5 is reached again with the function when we have an angle of 300 degrees. But the value of the function being equal to zero occurs for both functions but not for the same angle. And since it doesn't happen for the same angle, you cannot find it using that technique because a single angle should be able to find the same value for both functions, which will not be the case here. But certainly when you set up a table of values, you can realize that both functions will, at some value for theta, reach the value zero, meaning being at the origin, and therefore that gives you that third point of intersection, which eluded us when we used that particular method. That's how it's done. 